everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be showing you how to take up your voile net curtains. So as you can see at the moment, these are extra long and also they have this lovely little leaf pattern on them. So I want to make them shorter, but also move this pattern up. But yeah, so I'm going to show you how to make them higher from the top. So we're going to take them up from the top here and move the pattern up. So if you've got a patterned wall like I have here, this will be a great video for you. If they're just plain, then that's also great. Because if you want, this method's good, if you want to keep this really nice professional edging, because we're going to take up everything using my technique from the top of the wall. So we're going to take everything off and you won't even be able to see it or look like it's literally just arrived like that and it will just be like built in so to speak to this seam that's already there so yeah keep watching and let's go okay so your curtains if you've opted for this type of finishing at the top should look like this so you have like a place here where you could pull them if you want to make them smaller with more gathered pleats um i'm not going to be doing that because i just want them flat so that's obviously the wrong side of the fabric. What you want to do first is you want to measure how much you want to take off to start with, um, just kind of by eyeballing it, you know, roughly looking at how much you think needs to be taken off. But if your curtains don't have a pattern, then measure the exact amount that needs to be deducted. This is the right side of the fabric. So on the right side of the fabric, just measure from the seam here so whichever type of seam your curtains have arrived with measure from there down to here so say for example you feel like 30 centimeters needs to be taken off in total so just measure from here to here and I've measured 15 centimeters like so that's 15 centimeters um, and then what you're going to do now is pull up some of the excess and basically fold it over. So you're going to be basically folding another 15 centimeters up to meet this seam here. So this will work as like the folded point and then you want to bring it up like so and pop a pin in place just under or on top of this sewn line here as close as you can get to that sewn line. So if you see, look, fold it and pop a pin, like so. So now this total measurement from the 15 up to there is 30 centimeters. You just want to pin all the way along, so pulling up the excess and pinning all the way along, creating like this pleat matching up with the seam line there. So I've just popped a pin on the front to show you the amount that has been taken off is underneath here. As you see, it's formed like a pleat underneath. I'll just show you. That's the amount that I have taken off. So obviously you've got the amount divided into two folded in half in that pleat there and I will show you now what they look like with the pattern okay so this is what they look like the, with the pattern so I've moved the pattern up and I don't want it to cover the full window just like that so with my measurement that I eyeballed at the start I worked out that if I took off that amount I would be able to get the pattern across the window but not fully across the window. If you get to this stage and you think actually I want my pattern to be even more up, so you would like find that point here and measure that. I'll just get my tape measure. Looking at the point of the pattern which reaches the highest at the moment, work out how much you want to add. So let's say for example you want to add six centimeters extra of the pattern up onto the window. You would need to take that measurement, so for this example six centimeters, and add it to the pleat measurement at the top. 
We would add it by repeating the first step when we took the total to be deducted, halved it and made the pleat. But also adding 6 centimeters, like in this example to your total to be deducted. And whilst you're already here, because the next stage, if you have a pattern like I do, you'll also need to take these up from the bottom um, because obviously we've only deducted the amount we need to get the pattern on the window. So pop a pin now in place for where you want these to finish. So I actually want them to finish here because when the wind blows, the curtains kind of like go out of the window and they rise quite a lot. So I think I'm gonna make them stop here. So I'm just popping a pin here as I want them to finish here, just above the countertop. But obviously if you didn't have a pattern on your voiles, then you would have taken up enough at the top there in that pleat so in the next stage it would be your final stage you wouldn't need to do this stage we're doing now but obviously if you have a pattern you'll still have excess at the bottom and the next step we're going to do after the step we're about to do um, would be to still keep this like I said at the start of the video but to basically take up the excess so that this is at the bottom Okay, so now on to sewing. You're literally going to sew just where you've pinned, obviously removing the pins as you sew. So I'm going to sew with the top part here on the left hand side and then remove the pins as I go along. But if you find it easier, you can also sew on this side. So if you want to start from the opposite end, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Then you can also sew like here, so you know you're getting really close to this part here because we want to sew obviously right close to here. So you could use your top um, band, this part here is your guide. So as you see, there is the pin. So we're sewing here. using a normal straight stitch. So back stitch to begin with. I mean the good thing about whirls is they're kind of see-through so I can actually see the line that I'm trying to aim for just through them. Which makes everything much more accurate which is great. And don't worry if you get little bunching up parts like that, it's just a type of fabric and if you're a bit worried about it then as you go along just smooth it out vertically and horizontally this will prevent any pleating which you don't want. I'm doing this all along just smoothing out horizontally and vertically. So that's the only thing with missing out the tack stage when you sew and just do it with the pins. Um, you often get like these little kind of bumps and which can cause pleating. So it's always better to tack sew before machine sewing and um, doing your final stitch um, instead of just doing pins and then straight to final stitch because tack sewing will eliminate that. But you know, just for the purpose of this video, I'm showing you the simpler, um, easier option and missing out that tack sewing step. See, I can see the actual line that I'm aiming for just there underneath. Let's see if I can show you here. here. So that's great because it's making it easier for me and it's making everything nice and straight and even. So I'm nearly there. Okay, all done. So I'll just show you what that should look like at this stage. Okay, so as you see, the line that we've just sewn here. Ignore, this is a bit uneven at the end, but I was just a bit worried about the pleating, so I kind of 
overlapped it a little bit. You can't even see that machine stitch because I've literally sewn right on top of the band here that actually came with the curtains. I'll just show you. So there's the pleat as well. And we're about to cut that off and finish that. And here is the right side of the fabric, what it should look like. So the pleat is underneath there. And if you see up close, that's from our new stitch line. Now we're going to turn it back over and cut off here. What you want to do now is you want to cut this down. So what I want to do is I want to cut it and then I want to conceal it even more after I've finished the edge up in this part here so that you really won't be able to tell. So looking at that I would say that I need to leave if you measure this part here. Measuring from that tape down I can see that I would need to leave about 2 centimeters or 2.5 centimeters. Basically leave enough extra so that when you fold it up it can go into the area where you want to conceal it. So on my curtains it's the part on the header tape where you pull the string to gather it and I've chosen the bottom line with the string closest to the seams here. You can measure that or you can just roughly cut it using your judgement and as I sew a lot I'm just going to cut it using my judgement. Just make sure you are cutting just this pleat part off. So that was the original amount that we deducted. Make sure you're not cutting from the main net curtains, just be sure. Also, it's better to use bigger scissors. I was just making life a bit difficult for myself there. If you want to see it from above, so if you want to see it from above, here it is, just cutting all along there. So this is the pleat part that we measured at the beginning to see how much we'd need to take off. So that's all been taken off now. You can save that for another sewing project, it's, you know, don't throw it away, you might find some use with that. And now, what you want to do is finish this edge that we've just cut. So I'm going to use this C zigzag stitch. Okay, so taking that part that we just cut, this raw edge, we're going to sew the zigzag stitch to finish the edge. So here is how it should look. You see there's still some fraying here. That's just due to the type of fabric. So if you want, you can zigzag stitch again over that just to get rid of some more of the fraying or just trim them off at this stage. Okay, so now what you want to do is fold this up and catch it in to this white part here, this like thicker part here, and then do that all along. If you don't have this type on your band, then anything you can catch up with and line it up with. So the reason I'm choosing this one is because when you turn it over you won't be able to see this edge at all because it will be like hidden behind this even though it's finished nice and neat just apart from a few little bits of fraying which you can just trim. 
but it will be like hidden, concealed behind this mark here. So you can press it now actually. Okay, so I have my curtains now to be ironed before the turning up of that hem and um, the turning up of this part. So just we want to iron with this facing down, even though we're going to turn it up in a moment, we want to sew in between here, that's our machine sewn line. So right in between here, all the way along. It's really crucial not to miss out this step as this adds the more professional finish and it just incorporates everything very well into the top band. Also pressing at this stage makes it really hard to notice where we've actually sewn. Um, it just moulds everything nicely into the original band at the top. Okay, so now that's done, what you want to do is with this edge here, you want to turn it up and press it down. So press it down here, pressing up into the band as you see. If you find that this does overlap this point, what you want to do is when you press it, just press it so that it doesn't overlap that because again we want it to be concealed. So just press it, like just pull it down a little bit and then press it. Okay, so now when you turn it around, it's amazing you can't see anything because that seam with the zigzag stitch there is covered by this seam that already came with the curtains. But now we need to sew this down so that it doesn't pop back over. Okay, so now we're going to sew this down. I'm deciding to sew it using this part as my guide. So I'm going to turn it up and I'm using this bottom part just in case some parts are a little bit uneven and you see it's a bit shorter here and a bit longer here. And um, that's just my, when I rushed it a little bit. And be sure to move this up out of the way in case you do want to use this to give your neck curtains a gathered look. So I'm going to fold this up and then machine sew over this edge, catching it here. So when you turn it over, it will look like it's just like a reinforced sewn line on the bottom of this part that was already on the curtains. This is what it looks like from the other side. You see it literally looks like it's just incorporated into your original curtain band. Okay, so now if you need to take up the bottom of the curtains, then we're going to proceed with those steps now. And there is the pin that we put in place earlier, ready for this stage. I'm now taking this scrap piece of paper and placing it below the curtains. This is to prevent markings getting onto the fabric below, so in my case my carpet. Now we are going to start marking, so take your tape measure or long ruler. Measure from where you pinned down to the finished hem like so. So on my curtains it's roughly 25.5 inches from the pinned point down to the finished hem here. I'm going to take that measurement of 25.5 inches and mark all the way along now from the left side to the right side. I'm using a big marker pen here just for illustration purposes. So I've already done the left side as you can see the paper is there so I'm just showing you again that I'm measuring 25.5 inches and now I'm moving the paper along to continue marking all the way along whilst always making sure that it's 25.5 inches. 
Okay, so I have dotted all the way along now and they are ready to be joined up with my ruler. You can also measure across and up from the bottom in a different method if you have an easier method that you normally use. I'm just using this based on my equipment. If, for example, you have a pattern master cutting type of ruler, then you can use that, but I don't have one of those. Okay, so now what you need to do is bring the finished hem here up to the line with the right side of the fabrics facing each other inwards. Now, depending on how thick the hem is that they have arrived with, you'll need to place that hem accordingly above the marked line. So for example, if your hem is one centimeter thick, then you'll need to place it one centimeter above that marked line so that when you turn the hem down, it reaches that finished line mark we've already just marked and when I say place it above the line we've just marked I mean one centimeter from the line area where we are about to sew so as you see here where I have pinned that is one centimeter above the line and that is just excess I just showed you and then pin all along where the pins are, the pin line is one centimeter above the marked line or however much you have measured according to your hem thickness. It should look like this at this stage. This is the excess we will take off. Also, if you want to make sure that the excess we are about to take off is exactly the same all along, then measure from here this folded line up until this line we are about to sew or the top making sure it's exactly the same measurement all along the excess on mine is around 13 inches as you can see i'm measuring this area okay so now we are going to machine sew i'll just show you where we are going to sew here where we have popped the pins all along making sure that we sew as close as possible to this edge so that when we fold it under it will literally blend in and so that it's the correct measurement sewing using a normal straight stitch as you can see my needle is right up against the hem there that arrived on the curtains as you can see i'm sewing right near the gap So this is what it should look like. You can barely see the machine line we've just sewn because it is right under there on the hem that arrived with the curtains. And when we fold it down, it will reach the marked line where we wanted it to finish. But at the moment, we are still left with this excess that needs to be cut off. So what we are going to do now is cut it above the marked line here. So for mine, it's the orange line. So we want to cut above there. And as you can see, here is where I had originally pinned where I wanted the curtains to finish on the marked line there. Cut all the way along using the line as your guide. So I'm using my orange line as my guide. And as we cut, the marked line will fall off because it's on the side where the excess is. Like so. Make sure that whatever is left here does not overlap the finished edge when it is turned up. So it's under there and can't be seen when turned over like so. And now finish this edge using a zigzag stitch or an overlocker, whichever you have. Here is what the zigzag stitch looks like. If you do have fraying, then just trim that off. Or alternatively, you can sew a zigzag stitch again after this first zigzag stitch line. It should look something like this now. 
and our next step will be to press this. We're going to press it in two stages. But just take the time to check these seams first. If you think that the seam with the zigzag stitch will overlap the other seam, the hem that was already there, then take this opportunity to trim it smaller and sew another zigzag stitch to finish off the raw cut edge. And now trim off the threads here like so. Cut it as neat as possible now as we're nearly finished. Now on to the final pressing stages, we first want to press this seam open, so pushing those two apart like so, flattening those seams out. As you can see this pressing stage creates a very very crisp finish and flattens it very well. It's a crucial step for making it look seamless like it was already arriving like that. It's now impossible to see where we have machine sewn, as you can see, it's so neat. Now turn your curtains with the wrong side of the fabric facing your iron, so the right side facing the ironing board and press all along, pressing that seam with the zigzag stitch down. I also want to quickly show you that the pattern from my net curtains has actually transferred onto my ironing board, so be careful when you're pressing at this stage if you have an ink type of pattern on your net curtains like I do. Also another tip is if your edging here is bulky then trim it and then zigzag stitch over it. Finally press your curtains all over or you can steam them when we hang them now. Okay everybody and here they are, the finished curtains. As you can see mine do reach just above the countertop but as explained when the wind blows they do rise so I wanted them still to be like slightly touching the countertop. But as you see the pattern is now on the window, they look really nice and everything is incorporated at the top there. You can't even see where I've sewn. And here is that seam, the last seam that we did, the zigzag stitch, and how neat that is. As you can see the wind is blowing and it moves them about and normally they rise, you see they rise much higher, hence why I wanted them to still slightly touch the countertop. Yeah I'm really happy with that and I hope you managed to shorten your curtains and my video helped. If you want to see more content like this then please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you all for watching, have a lovely day, see you all soon.